Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I really appreciate you being here. It's another beautiful day here in Eastern Kentucky and me and my son is out in the mountains and we're uh, testing out some gear. And the one thing I want to talk about in particular, it seems to be all the rage of all the prepper channels is bug out bags. And I'll throw a picture of mine in here and we're gonna get this camera turned around. I'll show you what I've got, why I got it and we're going to test this stuff out tonight and see if we actually need it or if we need something different or better. So stay tuned. Okay, everybody, what I have here is the Condor 72-hour bag. I apologize for the wind, but I can't control the nature, so hopefully it won't be too bad on you. But this is the Condor 72-hour bag, and as you can see, it's pretty well stuffed to the gills. I did weigh this. It weighs 45 pounds. Uh, I'd like to cut at least 10 pounds off of that if possible. I do have a full water bladder in the back and I do have a full quart canteen on the side. Anyway, let's start opening this thing up and I'll show you what's in it and kind of explain why I've got what I do. First thing right here on the side is a first aid kit on the rip away pouch. This is just kind of a basic injuries that might occur. Got gloves, ace bandages, different size bandages here, Sharpie marker and a tongue depressor. This little zip compartment's all the different little medications, Motrin, uh, Imodium, some Tylenol, just your basic over-the-counter medications. And here we've got Trangler bandage, some gauze, emergency blanket, Israeli bandage, some more gauze, and another Trangler bandage. Just a basic small first aid kit. In this pocket behind the first aid kit, I have the Sawyer Mini water filter and I also have the MSR pump type filter. Not really sure which one I'm going to end up liking the best. I know the Sawyer weighs a lot less and takes up a lot less space so that may be the one to go to and it does filter a lot more water than this one does. As you can see you just drop the hose down in your water source and pump it. The water will come out the bottom, clean water will come out the bottom to fill your container. Spin this thing around. The other outside pocket, I have the Pathfinder metal canteen along with the canteen cup. And that folds out. And the stove. Down in the bottom here is the lid for the canteen cup. Now let's roll this thing on its back and kind of get into the main compartments. Down here on the bottom, I have it strapped to the straps on the bottom of the pack. I have the charade mini machete, they call it. It's more like a big bowie knife to me. Could be very handy for setting up a camp. And in this bag is a 10 by 10 tarp along with a pre-made ridge line and a bag of steaks. You can make a multitude of different types of shelters with this. Uh, when we was here last weekend, I made an A-frame shelter using this, and I'll throw some pictures in of that. In this bottom pocket here, I have a fixed blade knife. that has a Kydex sheath and it has a ferrocium rod. And this pouch is a weapons cleaning kit. This small zipper pocket here. I have two of the Night Eyes figure nine carabiners and I'll show you how to use those when I start setting up a uh, shelter. I have a roll of uh, Gorilla Tape, Duct Tape, a compass, and a and a small shiv wheel pulley, can of bug spray, knife sharpener, and I have one of the folding utility knives and a pack of blades that includes the carpet hook blades, which are real good for skinning out animals. Here I have the, the rock tool multi-tool. Has all your standard tools that comes with it in a general multi-tool. 
and it does have a set of screwdriver bits that fits in it. I got this off Amazon. I used it a little bit last weekend. I really like it. It's heavy, but it's no heavier than my Leatherman 300 that I have. And this one has more tools in it. So I've started going with this and I really like it so far. And I have a small flashlight that converts to a little pop-up lantern that you can set inside your shelter and a headlamp that's white and red. And I also have a small folding saw. Molly Webb in here, just a cheap pair of cord bracelet that's got a whistle and a little button compass and a fire starter built into it. Came with a cook set that I'm gonna be showing you, so I just strapped it to that. Now this pocket here, this is kind of the pocket I use for stuff I want to get to easily. I have a pair of leather work gloves. Back of the dude wipes. I believe everybody knows what them's for. Spare batteries that fits all my various flashlights and little lanterns and st other items that I have. And my USGI poncho. And this next pocket here, I have a small mesh bag. It has some uh, bags of honey roasted peanuts, some peanut M&Ms, some uh, beef and cheese sticks, some beef jerky, and some drink mixes. This would be my lunch meals and calories that you could have while on the move. I have a shemag and just a pair of brown jersey gloves. Let's open up the main compartment. Okay. I have a can of fuel for my little stove that I'll show you here in just a second. I have one of the aftershock preparedness backpackers meals that's freeze dried chili mac and spaghetti with beef. And then I have a mountain house chili mac. So that's three meals there. I have the Mountain House breakfast skillet. Another Mountain House breakfast skillet. And a Grizzly Ridge oatmeal with strawberries. So what I have there is three breakfasts and three dinners. This bag's supposed to be able to sustain you for 72 hours. So along with the snacks, items, and beef jerky and stuff like that that you could have for lunch, that right there would give you nine meals. This bag here is kind of my hygiene bag. And my I have a scouring pad sponge and some dish soap in this bag for my cooking utensils and stuff. And in this bag, I have a sponge, some body powder, some body wash, some deodorant for taking a quick sponge bath out. And one of the quick dry compact towels. This is kind of my cooking utensils kitchen set. Here's my little portable stove that screws on top of that fuel canister. These do work very well. They're very lightweight and they take up very little room. The fuel canister takes up the most of the space and next time I'm at Sportsman's Warehouse or somewhere, I'm gonna get one of the smaller fuel canisters. I have just, you know, some forks and knives and spoons and Ziploc bags and a bottle of salt. This here's my fire starting set. I have trioxane tablets, emergency candles, uh, ferrocium rod, along with a collapsible straw for to make bellows for getting your fire going. Several different types of lighters. Some of the Yuko stormproof matches. Some jute twine tinder. Some cotton balls with Vaseline. There's a magnesium rod down in here. 
and I believe that's about it. I keep it in this little waterproof container because that's one thing you want to protect your fire starting equipment. Here's a little just basic 5x7 lightweight tarp. This is the Vail Howl air mattress and I'll show you that in more detail when I get my camp set up. This is the Huncho Poncho liner. It's uh, just like a Wooby that you hear a lot of people talking about, the military Woobies, but this one has a zipper in it and you can actually zip it up and make a small sleeping bag out of it. I used this last weekend and we'll talk more about this when I set up the camp further. And this, this is just a bag of paracord and carabiners and some different anchoring devices to use during shelter making. And this, I haven't used yet, I will be using it tonight to test it out and see how it works, is the Mallow Me cook set. It has a small lightweight skillet, pot with a lid, and inside the pot is a wooden spoon, a small fold-up ladle, and a couple of serving bowls. So we'll be cooking a meal with this tonight and see how this works out for us. And along with that, this was a 18-piece set altogether. I'll talk about this further in another video. It came with uh, folding silverware. So you have a, a spoon, a knife, a fork, and a spork that all fold up like that and fit in this little pouch. And then in these back pockets back here in these back mesh pockets, I have spare socks, three pairs of socks, and I have spare underwear. Because if you're out there for three days, you definitely want to be able to change your socks and your underwear at the least. And in this bottom pocket here is a small cotton towel and a bandana and a couple of the thick contractor 55 gallon trash bags. Pretty much it guys, except on the shoulder strap, I do have a multifunction LED flashlight. And as I mentioned, there is a two and a half liter water bladder in the bladder pocket in the back. All right, everybody, that's the contents of my 72 hour bug out bag. Now, the one thing that I have figured out real quick, and I figured this out quickly last weekend especially, is it's impossible you cannot carry 72 hours of water. I mean, you're looking at anywhere from three quarts to a gallon per day. So, you know, you cannot pack three gallons of water. That's additional 24 pounds. So all these people with these illusions are gonna strap their bug out bag on and go out and live in the woods along with their full battle rattle. Uh, you better have a good water source. The other thing is, is if you're bugging out and you're trying to get from where it's, you're at and it's bad to where you're trying to get to where it's safer, you better map your routes out and have some water sources along the way because you're definitely gonna have to restock water on a daily basis. The other thing is if it's going to take you more than 72 hours to get from point A to point B, you better have you some caches in place along your route with some additional food and supplies and water. To me, I just don't think the fantasy of bugging out is what it's all cracked up to be. I believe people need to start concentrating more on bugging in and staying where it's safe. Why would you abandon everything that you've worked so hard and everything you've got established? Now, don't get me wrong, the time may come that you do have to leave what you've got, but I think too many people have the plan that, well, if something happens, I'm just going to grab my bug out bag and go. You better have a very detailed plan. And like I said, that pack right there weighs 45 pounds. How far are you going to get packing 45 pounds, not counting your full battle rattle? I really appreciate you watching. Let me know in the comments. What would you take out of this pack? What would you add? What's different about yours? I'd really like to hear. We can all learn together. I really appreciate you watching. If you found this video helpful, please share it out with people. Hit that like button. Let me and YouTube know you like this type of content. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. And remember, prepare today for what may happen tomorrow. And I will see you on the next video.